it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood and I hope you'll be my neighbor for the length of the time it takes for me to explain this next video. We're going to look at how to render models. This is a player model. It's just an example. It could be a building or a tree or a chair or a big monster, anything you want in your game. How do you render it? This is a problem we've been kind of avoiding for the last, uh, for all of our videos. How do you render models? We rendered simple billboarded sprites and cubes and, and boxes and stuff. We haven't actually looked at how we're doing that, and that's a problem we're going to rectify now. We can model this guy by breaking him up into what's called a triangle mesh, a bunch of triangles. Everything in games, almost everything in games, is made out of these triangles. And in order to render anything, you have to break up your scene into these triangles, just the way I'm doing right now. Most geometric primitives can be broken up into triangles somehow. <clears throat> and if you want a, for example, if you want a smooth curved surface, all you have to do is break your triangle, break it into a lot of triangles so that it looks like a curve um, when, you, when you see it from a distance. And that's how pretty much everything is done. So we're going to, I mean, we've been studying the triangles a lot, but we're going to continue to study triangles. Let's go over some terminology. A lot of this may seem obvious, and I apologize for that, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So this is a triangle, and it has three vertices. Here they are. I'm going to call them A, B, and C. A, B, C. They are vertices. Or some people, the, the word vertex is kind of weird, because what's the plural? I say vertices, some other people might say vertexes, whatever. We also have, and a triangle has three vertices. We also have three edges. This is an edge. This is an edge. This is an edge. Should be pretty straightforward. Also, triangle has a face. Face. I thought I changed colors, but I didn't. And this face is going to have, the face you can think of it, you can think of the face as if this triangle is embedded in a plane, the plane and, and the face share the same s surface. So the triangle is going to have one more property, which is going to be a normal. Normal. Which is a vector that sits at a right angle to the face, to the plane that the triangle's in. So how do we calculate the normal? We've done it in previous videos, but I'll recap it right now since we're starting, a, a, since we're going to be doing a lot of triangles. We take B minus A, that's a vector that goes from A to B, and we take the cross product of that with C minus A, which is a vector that goes from A to C. In fact, any two vectors in the plane of the triangle will work, but this is just an easy way to get two vectors in the plane. We cross product them and we get the normal. Non-normalized, it's not a unit length normal, but it is a normal. So, with that in mind, earlier in our videos we made a billboarded sprite. A sprite being just some kind of graphic that you render on a square like this, or a rectangle. This doesn't look like a this is kind of lopsided a little bit, but it's the best I can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not a better drawer. I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> so we want, we're going to draw a billboarded sprite using these triangles. It's actually really easy to, you got to break it down into triangles, right? Just like up here, we bro broke this player down into a triangle mesh. We have to break this rectangle down into two triangles. And of course, the way to do that is by cutting it down the middle right here. So let's, let's, assign some points here and see how these triangles um, come out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is one one. This this point right here on the top right, in fact let me grab another color. This point right here on the top right is the point one one. One one. This point right here will be zero one. This point on the top left. 
here we're at zero zero and here we're at one zero so if I want to make two triangles out of this <clears throat> All we have to do is get the three points in this triangle, the three points in that triangle, and we're done. So I'm going to do triangle A and triangle B. A is three triangles. I'm going to make an array of triangles. I'm going to denote that with this, uh, with this square bracket. Now, one thing to consider is what order do we specify the vertices in? Order is actually important here. If I, do the tri if I specify the points counterclockwise, my triangle will be facing one way. The normal will be going one way. Whereas if I do it clockwise, the triangle will be facing the other way. So for my graphics library, the one I happen to be using, the winding is always counterclockwise. So I'm going to go counterclockwise here, starting at this point. So 1, 0, and then 1, 1. Going counterclockwise, we're going around this way. And then finally, 0, 1. <clears throat> I happen to be using OpenGL where the default is counterclockwise. If you're using DirectX, you're going to do clockwise, but really it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. So for triangle B, we're going to start again as, at 1, 0, 1, 0. And then you're going to go up to 0, 1. Not 1, 1, because we're only doing B now, right? <clears throat> and then the third one will be 0, 0. So that's it. We've defined two triangles, which together will make a square. That's the basic idea. Any more complicated object can be broken down into triangles like this. So now let's go to the code and see how it works. So what I've got here is an array of vectors. I have six vectors. Where each vector is going to be the point in a triangle. And the reason I have six is because, again, I have two triangles with three vertices each. And so two times three is six. I need a total of six uh, vectors. So I've already set up the triangles. Here they are. It's the information that we, we saw just now in our video. I've just loaded them into this vector, and now let's render them. The first thing we're going to do, be, tell it to begin rendering a vertex array. Now all this stuff is, is specific. This is a, an interface that I wrote. You're not going to see it in any other engine like this. But I'm not trying to teach the interface. I'm trying to teach the math. Depending on what engine you're using, or if you're writing directly to DirectX or OpenGL or whatever, this is all going to look different. But the concepts are the same, and the math never changes, which is nice. How many vertices do we have? Again, six, two times three. So that's it. We tell the graphics library we're going to render a vertex array. We set the position buffer. This is our position buffer. It's a buffer. It's a vertex buffer with a bunch of positions of triangles in it. And then we tell it we have six vertices, or in other words, two triangles, three, uh, three vertices each. So that's it. Let's run it. So here it is. Here's our little square. This square is just two triangles that we specified and we're, we're running. Notice that if I go around behind it, it disappears. That's because of the winding. Uh, I'm using OpenGL, so my winding is counterclockwise. I think, I'm pretty sure that, that DirectX, the, rounding, the winding is, is clockwise. But again, it really doesn't matter as long as you are consistent. So, yeah, I guess that's it for this video. We're going to continue in this vein, learning how to draw more complex models and eventually we'll build up to some really cool stuff. See you then.